You don't know how ISO 27000 is structured. You don't know what each of these clauses from the standard uh, actually requires. So in this video, I'll explain you each ISO 27000 clause and how it relates to the Annex A of the standard, which uh, specifies all the safeguards or controls uh, that you can use. And I'll also show you how to use uh, ISO knowledge base to get quick answers to any questions around uh, uh, ISO 27000 clauses. And after you watch this video, it will be clear to you what are the ISO 27000 requirements and how the standard is structured. And I made this video uh, for people who have to implement this standard and they want to learn uh, what exactly they have to comply with or for students uh, who simply want to learn the basics uh, of this uh, leading uh, cybersecurity standard. And if you want to learn more about uh, ISO 27001, you can click this link uh, which will take you to this uh, what is ISO 27001 page and where to start on advisor.com uh, website. So how is ISO 27000 structured? It has basically two parts. Uh, the first part is the so-called main part of the standard or the management part of the standard. Uh, and it consists of uh, uh, clauses from zero to 10. And there is this uh, uh, second part of the standard Annex A, which lists uh, 93 controls or safeguards. Now in the main part, uh, the management part of the standard, uh, clauses zero to three are not really important. Whereas clauses four to 10 are mandatory and you must uh, conform, you must comply with all of these clauses if you want to be uh, compliant with the standard, if you want to go for the certification. In the Annex A, uh, you do not have to implement all the 93 controls. You can actually choose which of these controls are applicable for your business uh, through the process of risk management and then writing a statement of applicability. Now, many people think uh, that this uh, first part, the management part of the standard is not really important. And so they think that this second part, the Annex A with these uh, security controls is by far the more important. But the truth is, is actually that they, these both parts are very equally important because they depend uh, one on each other. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say that you want to implement a control called backup. This is control A.8.13 from the Annex A. Now, how would you know if, uh, how often do you have to perform this uh, backup? You have to perform this uh, risk management actually to find this out. Uh, how would you know if everyone in the company is actually implement this, uh, implementing this uh, uh, control in a proper way? You would have to def uh, go through this uh, uh, internal audit. Uh, how would you know uh, how to monitor how the backup systems are doing? You would have to do this uh, monitoring of all these uh, uh, systems and so on and so forth. So all of these elements, risk management, monitoring, you know, providing resources, uh, uh, direction uh, from the top management, all of these uh, parts are actually defined in the main part of the standard. So the, the uh, main part is necessary actually to manage these controls from the Annex A. This is why it's important that they, so, so, so to say, work together. So let's go through uh, all of these clauses uh, 4 to 10 from the main part of the standard. Uh, clause number 4 is called context of the organization. It has a couple of uh, sub clauses basically that require you to identify internal and external issues. So internal issues could be let's say organizational structure, you know, the uh, level of uh, education of your employees uh, and these kind of things. External uh, issues uh, could be let's say technological trends, uh, uh, market trends, uh, these kind of things. Uh, then this uh, clause uh, requires you to identify all the interested parties and their requirements. And typically interested parties are, let's say, your clients that have some security requirements or, uh, let's say, governments uh, and the laws and regulations and the requirements that come through these uh, laws and regulations. Then this clause uh, requires you to define the ISMS scope. So basically how far or how big, uh, let's say, you want your area uh, to be protected or which kind of information within your company you want to, to protect. And finally, this uh, clause requires you to manage the information security management system uh, based on these external requirements, but also based on your internal policies uh, and procedures. Clause number five is called leadership. Uh, this clause requires uh, the top management to show commitment to information security you know, by uh, publishing the top level uh, policy to provide, uh, by providing all the necessary resources, by communicating this importance of uh, security to all employees and other interested parties, and so on and so forth. This clause also requires the top management to publish the information security policy, and that is uh, the top level uh, uh, document within their, their ISMS. And this top level uh, policy does not uh, describe the details of security, 
Rather, it shows uh, a direction in which these uh, ISMS and security need to go, what are the objectives uh, that need to be achieved, and also it shows the commitment of the top management uh, towards uh, security. And also, uh, the standards, I mean, this clause 5, requires the uh, uh, company to define all the important roles and responsibilities. So, who, who is responsible for managing the ISMS, who is responsible for uh, reporting the results to the top management, who is responsible for, let's say, uh, particular uh, parts of the standard and, and uh, uh, running uh, the ISMS, and so on. Clause 6 is called planning. And it requires companies uh, to do risk management, which means that you have to do the risk assessment, uh, find uh, which potential uh, incidents could happen, this is uh, where you find risks, and then define how to treat them, uh, basically find out uh, which uh, kind of uh, methods you will use to decrease these risks, uh, typically this is by finding uh, uh, security controls which would fit uh, uh, these risks. It also requires you to set clear objectives and also the plan how to uh, uh, achieve these uh, security objectives. And uh, this plan is typically done uh, through the risk uh, treatment plan. And finally, this uh, uh, clause uh, 6 requires you to plan all the changes. Uh, so basically, that uh, any change that you make to your security has to be done in a, in a planned manner so that it is done uh, through a concrete uh, process of uh, managing changes. Clause 7 is called support. And this uh, clause describes uh, that you have to support your ISMS uh, by providing enough uh, resources, meaning financial resources, human resources and so on, so basically provide enough money and people to, to run it. Uh, it also uh, defines that you have to make your people uh, trained, meaning that they are competent for doing the uh, security roles and responsibilities, and that also that you have to raise awareness about security in order for the ISMS uh, to be successful. It also requires you to communicate security to uh, all the relevant uh, interested parties and also it requires you to document uh, 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 policies and procedures uh, and, to pro uh, and to create records uh, as part of your uh, ISMS operation. Clause 8 is called Operation. And this clause basically defines that everything that you have planned for in the Clause 6, now you have to put into practice. So, based on your uh, risk assessment and uh, risk uh, treatment, you have to define which kind of security processes you have to create and then put them into operation. You also have to perform risk assessment not only once initially, but you have to perform this uh, risk assessment periodically so that you actually uh, find out any new risks that are happening. And you also have to implement this uh, risk uh, treatment plan on a continuous basis as you actually find out new risks as, and as you plan uh, new controls uh, uh, based on it. Clause number 9 is called Performance Evaluation. And this is basically where you want to find out how your ISMS is doing. And the standard uh, defines uh, the, the following things uh, on, through which you actually uh, do this. So, first one is that you have to measure and monitor uh, your uh, ISMS. This basically means that you have to measure if you are achieving all of your uh, objectives that you have set uh, that are mentioned in the Clause 6 and you also have to monitor all of your processes and systems if they are uh, performing as, as expected. You also have to do this uh, so-called internal audit. This is uh, something that you have to do as part of your ISMS internally, so this is not a certification or external audit. This is where your own internal auditor has to find out if you are compliant uh, with all of the uh, policies and procedures and the standard itself. And you also have to perform the management review so basically this is a, a kind of a meeting uh, of the top management where they have to take into account all the important information about the ISMS and then make some crucial decisions uh, like uh, uh, defining the new security objectives, uh, 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 providing additional money, uh, bringing in some new, let's say, policies and procedures around the security and so on. Clause 10 is called improvement. And it requires uh, so-called continual improvement of your ISMS meaning that uh, you know, once you implement uh, the ISMS, uh, you can't simply you know, forget about it. You actually have to make these smaller continual improvements and make it better almost on a daily basis because this is how you actually improve your security. It also requires you to uh, notify and actually find out about any kind of non-conformities, meaning if you are not compliant with the standard or, or with your own policies and procedures, and to make these so-called corrective actions. And uh, corrective actions are basically uh, a systematic way to resolve these non-conformities 
by actually eliminating the root cause why these non-conformities have happened uh, in the first place. Okay, so basically these are all the uh, clauses from the main part. And if you are familiar with this uh, so-called PDCA cycle, the plan, do, check, connect cycle, you will notice that uh, clauses uh, 4, 5, 6, 7 uh, are actually the planning phase, clause 8 is the implementation phase, clause 9 is the check phase, and finally uh, clause 10 is the act phase. Okay, regarding Annex A, so there are these uh, 93 controls uh, that are organized in four sections. So a section A.5 is called organizational controls. So these are controls like, you know, organizing uh, how to define roles and responsibilities, uh, policies and procedures, uh, asset inventory, these kind of things. Uh, section A.6 A is called uh, people controls. This is, you know, how to screen uh, when you're hiring new people, uh, how to sign uh, NDAs, uh, confidentiality agreements, uh, how to train them, make them aware, and so on. Uh, section A.7 is called physical controls. So this is basically about, uh, you know, physical security, secure areas and also how to protect your physical uh, equipment. And uh, A.8 uh, is the section uh, called technological controls. And there you have, let's say, uh, more typical IT controls, you know, like backup, uh, antiviruses, uh, uh, vulnerabilities, and so on. Now, I couldn't explain you the details of each and every clause and each and every, every control, because then this video would be at least a couple of uh, uh, hours long. But instead, I'll show you a very easy way on how to find out how to learn about these details. Okay, uh, what I'm showing you now is Experta. Uh, this is an AI-powered uh, knowledge, uh, knowledge base that is trained uh, specifically for uh, ISO 27000 standards. So let's see how it can, it can help us with the various questions. So you can ask questions like, you know, how is uh, ISO 27001 structured? Okay, click enter, and then it basically shows you all the clauses that I've been uh, explaining you. So clauses uh, 0 to 3, clauses 4 to 10, and then for each clause it provides an explanation. You can also click, uh, you know, uh, the tell me more link, and then it opens up, you know, the original question uh, here and provides the answer in the main part uh, of the standard. Now, let's uh, move on and ask some other uh, questions, uh, like uh, how is Annex A structured? How is an Annex A structured? It already provides the suggestion here for the question, and it gives you again these uh, four sections. And again, you can tell me, uh, click tell me more to, to give you more uh, uh, ideas. Now, you can also ask it to, to list all the controls. So list Annex A controls. Okay. And it gives you all the 93 controls. In case you're interested in any of these, you can click simply, simply tell me more. And it provides you with the answer. And uh, you can also click uh, here, you know, other uh, uh, controls. So let's say that you want to learn more about collecting the evidence. Tell me more. And it provides you with the answer about this particular uh, control. Okay, uh, you can ask uh, also questions about uh, specifically about the main part of the standard. So what is clause, let's say, 4.3. Let's see. And it gives you exactly the you know the details of this uh, clause. Uh, you can ask some further questions like uh, how to implement clause 4.3, and it gives you exactly the steps that you need to to take. You can also ask questions. You know uh, uh, what will the auditor look for regarding clause 4.3. Okay, here goes the question already. And it gives you exactly you know, the things that uh, you uh, that uh, auditor will be uh, looking for. So this is how you use uh, Experta to simply drill deeper uh, into the standard and ask any question uh, about it. Okay, I hope that uh, this helped you to learn about ISO 27000 clauses and, and structure. And uh, to sign up for a free account uh, at Experta, you can click this link and then you will be able to uh, start learning yourself uh, through this uh, ISO knowledge base.